Hello and welcome to this short Kubernetes tutorial. Today we're going to talk about pod disruption budgets. What are they and what function do they perform? So I have an AKS cluster running here in my Azure tenant and I'm just going to show you some files that I have here. I have a backend and frontend.yaml. These are just small deployments and I'm going to apply all of these files now by just running k apply k dot and what i'm doing here is i have a customization file and this calls all of the other files so i can very quickly apply all of these files and what it has done it has um, if i switch to the misha namespace i just created what it has done it has created a backend deployment here and a front-end deployment I okay, get deploy here. So I have a deployment of a backend with one replica and a deployment of a front end with three replicas. And now I have my AKS cluster and I'm just going to quickly start a um, upgrade of the cluster. So we go to upgrade version and we are just going to upgrade to 127. And this takes a little bit of time, so I'm going to start this before I do my explanation. So, what is happening in the background now is that Kubernetes is going to take uh, my three nodes, or I have two nodes here. Here, I have two nodes. And what Kubernetes is going to do is it's going to create a new node in the system node pool, and it is going to uh, spin that up with the new version, and then it's going to drain this old node. So all of the pods that are on that node, you can see here that it has, um, crap, AKS system. We can see here that it has quite a few pods run, uh, running on it, right? So it's going to take each of these pods and reschedule it to the new node. and that takes some time, so the new node is spinning up now and it takes some time. But as it is going to um, reschedule all of these pods, what can happen if you don't have configured anything is that if all of these pods were running on the same node, you actually risk that Kubernetes evicts all of those pods at the same time. and that we, we want to avoid that, right? We don't want that to happen because our application is running in three replicas. And the whole idea with that is that we want to have it highly available to make sure that there are no disruptions. And how do we do that? How do we make sure that when we reschedule a workload to a new node, um, that it is going to make sure that it, there is at least one replica available at all times? Well, that's where the pod disruption budgets come in. So if I do k get pod disruption budget, we now see that we have two pod disruptions here, pod disruption budgets here. These I have configured in my YAML files, and we'll take a look at the YAML in a moment. But what we see here is we have a backend PDB and a frontend PDB. They have a min available of one and they have allowed disruptions of zero and two. So our front end deployment is running with three replicas and the way I've configured it is that it has an allowance of two disruptions. So what I'm effectively saying is that uh, one of them must be available at all times. And therefore, if I show you the YAML of this file, so um, front end on YAML. Here we see the front end pod disruption budget. Here I have specified that I must have one min available. So at all times, one of these pods needs to be available at all times. And therefore, the pod disruption is now cast now the, the pod disruption budget has calculated say, oh, I have three, I have a max of one. So I can have an allowance of two disruptions. It works very clean. And the way it works, I was giving a presentation on this um, at work uh, a month ago, 
And then I came up with this metaphor that I want to share with you. So it is very similar to this situation. Like I'm, I'm old enough to have been in, in a post office. We don't have post offices anymore in the Netherlands, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> but you have you have these situations where you have where you have a few tellers sitting behind a counter like this, right? Now, let's say this guy is the manager. He's the manager, and he manages the three tellers that are sitting here and helping clients. Now, in a situation where there is no pod disruption budget in Kubernetes, we risk that if we drain a node, that all of these pods get evicted at the same time. And the equivalent would be, well, we have three tellers, and all of them want to take a coffee break. And they're going to do it all at the same time. Well, what is going to happen if there's nobody here to help the customers? You're going to have a large line of customers, and they are going to be all very unhappy because they are not getting any help. So what this manager is going to say, he's going to say, guys, it's fine that you take a break every once in a while, but please communicate with each other to make sure that at least one of you guys is sitting here to help the customers so that our customers remain happy. So these, these bank tellers are then the pods in the metaphor. And this guy here, you know what he is? He is the pod disruption budget. He is the manager uh, specifying, okay, we need at least one here so two of you guys can take a break at the same time you can catch up on the weekend. So this guy is the manager and let's see if our uh, pod disruption budget uh, is doing its work already. So if I get the nodes now, I now see that I have a... Uh, Okay, so my workload node has been replaced. That has gone successfully. But now we see I have two system nodes here, right? I have one of version 126 and I have one of uh, version 127. Well, what is happening here is that the node actually is unable to drain now because I have a pod disruption budget. And how can we see that? we can see that in the events. So, so if I just get the events of the entire cluster, k okay, get events dash a. Let's see, do we see it here already? No, well, let's uh, grab for pdb. Grab pdb, and here we go. Here we see, um, actually my head is probably blocking it, so let me just move myself up a bit. So here we see this comment, eviction blocked, by too many requests, usually a PDB. So our AKS upgrade is now still ongoing, right? We are uh, maybe five minutes in already, but it is still in a upgrading running status. And our pot disruption budget is doing its work. Like I'm doing, if I do K get nodes now, we still have this node. Uh, there we have one ready and one is unable to drain and if I check my pod disruption budget k get pdb we still see our allowed disruption so how do we fix this we saw it has been it was available in the events so kubernetes is telling us that something is wrong k get events of all namespaces grab pdb it is still saying eviction blocked by too many requests. And how do we fix it? Well, we can either remove the pod disruption budget or we can use it as it is intended and we can just increase the replicas of our deployment. So our target for the pod disruption budget is the back end. So if I am in my uh, Misha namespace, if I then K scale deploy and then I'm going to check uh, get the HTTP backend and I'm going to say replicas is 2 
Now the deployment is scaled. We see the container is creating. And if I just do a K uh, watch N1 and then cube CTL get pods. Let's see. Ah, we see that both have now been restarted. And if I now get the nodes, maybe it is deleted already. Yep, here we go. The node is already deleted. And it. I have now demonstrated that the upgrade was still pending. It was waiting for this node to be uh, able to drain. And at the moment when I scaled up the deployment, our pod disruption budget was fulfilled. And now we see that the old node has been removed and all of my nodes are now at version 127. And if I do k get pdb now, we see that because I've scaled up my deployment, I have now one allowed disruption of the backend PDB, right? It works really well. And this is just a, a very small example, of course. This is just to um, um, show you the concepts. But if we take a quick look at the documentation, we see that we have a um, min available so you see, here you're saying um, evictions are allowed as long as they leave behind five or more healthy pods, if you set a min available of five, right? So um, how that works is if I have 10 replicas and I say min available, then Kubernetes is allowed to evict five of them at a time. You also have a setting that's called max unavailable. So that means that if I have a deployment of 10 replicas and I say a max unavailable of two, then it's only going to reschedule two pods at a time. So you can get very granular into it with this and you can also set it as percentages. Not, it doesn't matter if my application has 100 replicas or 10 or five, if I say there is a max unavailable of 20%, say, then you can always make be sure that only 20% of your application is down. And this is where you can really uh, harness the power of Kubernetes because if you have all of your applications running with multiple replicas, correctly configured with pod disruption budgets, then you can be sure that you can just do upgrades in the background and everything is going to be rescheduled without any downtime. So there is still, it is still saying it's upgrading running, but from my experience, I know that it takes a bit of time for it to fully complete. And um, because all of my nodes are um, now on the new version, I know that the, the upgrade has been completed uh, successfully. And if you configure this properly for all of your applications, you can just do automatic updates. Like here, you can have uh, automatic upgrade. You can configure that, that every stable version, that you can enable it for every patch version. And it can just auto update for all of the patch versions. You don't even have to do anything. And if you, correct, if you configure a cluster correctly, if you have all of your replicas or applications with multiple replicas, you can have a auto updating, highly available infrastructure uh, for your all of your applications and for all your teams to run their workloads on. So pod disruption budgets are really powerful and I hope you're going to use them in your applications. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.